You know, I've been hearing more and more about a thing called fake news. Fake, fake news. I've seen people destroyed, and I think it's very unfair. Some of the... Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is the Scorcher Report, news that burns. My name is Rich Gary. And I'm Pedro Santa Cruz. It's April 19th, and we're coming to you live from our studio in downtown Tucson. We're live, right? No, not live? Are we live? No. We're here. Are we live? Let's get started with some local news. I don't think anyone else is here. Well, the camera's red, so let's read the news. Who pushed the button? I don't know. Tucson teachers are trying to decide if they will protest low teacher pay with a walkout, which has caused USD leaders to scramble to find a plan for students when the teachers walk out. Schools say that they would stay open, but there would be no instruction for the students. Uh, where are they going to go? Some of the recommendations for the unsupervised classroom activities include super terrific all day nap time, classroom property damage 101, and scavenger hunt in Mrs. Desk until we find her flask of Captain Morgan. That's like a five minute activity. It's behind the files. It's behind the files. We know where she keeps the ramen. We're getting drunk. An Arizona beekeeper is raising more Italian honeybees in an attempt to boost populations of European bees to combat the dangerous recent increase in Africanized bee populations. The beekeeper says the Italian bees are gentler and easier to work with than their African counterparts. The Italian bees can be distinguished by their mustaches and their affinity for plumbing. That's the thing about Italian racism is that it doesn't matter. You can just say spaghetti, meatball, no one gets offended. It doesn't. Well, spaghetti's delicious. I think that's really Ooh, what it boils delicious. down to. That's really what it boils down to. The lesser long-nosed bat, Sonoran bat, that was once considered in danger, has made a recovery to the point that it's not on the endangered species list anymore. Hooray. Hooray. This is good news for margarita lovers, as the bat is the primary pollinator for the agave species that makes tequila. Still making a list of local endangered species, snowbirds who drive remotely close to the speed limit, hipsters with a shred of humility, and democratic senatorial candidates who are electable. One of these days they'll find somebody. I just roasted them. Roasted Roast. them. You like tequila? Yeah. It's pretty what, good. What I like to do at night is I take a shot of tequila with a shot of scotch and a, a shot of vodka. And I, I put it in one glass and I call it my fun glass. Sounds like fun. I have that for breakfast. Arizona's Republican dominated legislature is trying to change a Senate rule to prevent the seat of John McCain to go up for election in the case of his untimely death. McCain was diagnosed with brain cancer last year and was hospitalized this week for an intestinal infection. The new Senate rules stipulate that McCain will be kept in his seat and be maneuvered by two Senate aides. The bill has been nicknamed the Weekend at Bernie's Bill. I wonder if they'll be able to get his arms over his head. What do you think? No, yes, maybe. I can't even get my arms over my head. It's a stretch. Tucson nurse Sarah Sellers finished second in the Boston Marathon on Monday, trailing only Desiree Linden, who was the first American woman to win the race since 1985. Both Sellers and Linden said it was a tremendous honor, but that the moment would have been better if the streets weren't covered in vomit and they didn't just get hit on by a guy named Sully. Hey, hey, Desiree, let's go get a lager. Apparently, it's happened to you as well. Let's go, kid. Come on, I'm buying. Vomit. No fun. The corpse plant is getting ready to bloom in Tucson for the first time. The name corpse plant was given to the Indonesian plant because of its rapid growth and its smell of rotting meat which is perhaps why my nickname in high school was Corpse Plant. How did the producers find that out? 
Corpse plant. <laughs> How did they know? <laughs> Facebook, dude. Oh, makes sense. Zuckerberg leaked all your info. The Zuck strikes again. The city of Tucson is looking to build a multifamily housing and retail shop area in the current location of Maloney's. Tucson City Council unanimous, unanimously passed an ordinance on Tuesday in favor of the development and the raising of the bars and its parking lot, with which some had objected to. Responding to fears of a changing Tucson, the City Council said they will look to keep the spirit of Maloney's alive by smashing glass bottles on the sidewalk and hiring drunk girls in cowboy boots to stumble around the area. I think that's a nice move That'd on the city. Nice. Yeah, the new residential zone will love that. I think it's great. Oh, geez, Louise. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I'm getting word that our CEO, Brendan Tetro, is on the phone and he has an urgent message. Yeah. Brendan. Brendan, are you there? Hey, guys. Guys, how's it, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, Brendan. Uh, we can hear you. Uh, where, so, what's going on? Where are you at now? All right, you remember how I traveled to Russia with that robot Zuckerberg last week? You don't remember that? Well, I maybe, like last week, that was a long time ago. Like, a lot has happened since then. Okay, well, I'm in a Russian prison. What? Yeah, it turns out it's not a good idea to ask who's doing fake news in the streets of Moscow, so here I am. Uh, okay, okay. So, Brendan, what happened to your beard? They shaved it. It's the first thing they did. And they did a terrible job, too, because they're Russians. Ooh. Yeah, the Russians didn't like that joke either. They forced me to eat four liters of borscht. The worst part was the first two bowls were like heaven. The other 36 bowls were a living hell. Well, yeah, that sounds terrible. Oh, you have no idea. As you may know, borscht can irritate the bowels. It looks like the hallway scene of The Shining around here. It's pretty awful. Actually, it's not pretty at all. Yeah, very, very vivid. That sounds awful, terrible. Eh, I've been in worse. How's the show going? Oh, it's fine. Everything's totally under control. I mean, we... Ha, I bet. How you doing, Pete? Me? You mean Pedro? There's no other Pete around, am I right? No, but I'm, I'm doing not so good. I have four separate bookies who are hunting me down. <laughs> That's great. Look, guys, I need to install a successor in case of my untimely demise. And as sad as it might... Who is it going to be? His name is Ruben Studdard. What? Oh. Brandon, huge fan. I love American Idol. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to meet him. I don't know what that means, but I'm happy to hear it. Look, Ruben's here to steer the ship, so do what he says unless you know he starts trash talking me. And in that case, Pete, I'm going to need you to knock him out with a tire iron and bury him in the desert. We'll do anything for the team. Mm -hmm. And Tommy, you stay strong. Oh, I think you mean uh, rich. You're damn right, buddy. We'll all be rich someday. Take care, fellas. Godspeed. Man, that guy's a real moron. Okay, then. On to national and international news. The Parkland High School teacher, who vowed to arm himself in the classroom, was arrested this week for leaving his gun in the school's bathroom. Sean Simpson said that he left the gun by accident before it was picked up by a drunken vagrant who fired off a shot from the gun. Simpson says he was simply trying to teach his students the meaning of irony. Can you blame him? The can is a dangerous place. It's a war zone in there sometimes. Can we talk about the fact that there was a drunken vagrant inside of this school? Like, that's... That, that was, a, was or wasn't a student? I don't think a drunken vagrant is a student. How do you know? Let's get to the bottom of this. We'll, we'll, we'll bring this story back. Republican Representative John Carter is coming under fire after saying, quote, Believe me, a lot of attractive children are not making it to the border. 
as a result of human traffickers. Meanwhile, Carter says that ugly children continue to cross the, over the border in record numbers. That's a weird one. I wonder if that's going to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. You know, like Barry Bonds home runs or mm -hmm. record, record numbers of children. Record numbers of ugly children who got into America. West Virginia reached a $550,000 settlement with Larry's Drive-In Pharmacy. The pharmacy is accused of dispensing nearly 10 million doses of painkillers to less than 25,000 people. The case was discovered when authorities noticed that there was a place called Larry's Drive-In Pharmacy. As a result of the settlement, the pharmacy will pay the $550,000 penalty in op opioids, which they say will eventually have a $1.3 million street value. I've been going to Larry's Pharmacy for years. I'm really surprised that they would have a problem. There's a lot of big numbers in that joke. More than 20% of the Trump campaign spending has gone to legal feeds, according to data from the Federal Election Commission. The numbers also reveal that 15% went to administration, 40% employees, 25% Carl's Jr. I'm surprised it's not higher than 25%. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, my budget would be, you know, in the at least 40% range. I know Trump takes, takes down some, some uh, sandwiches every night, so. I would be, I would be going for, for pizza. Pizza Hut. Is that one of our sponsors? Duh. OK. French President Emmanuel Macron said that he convinced President Trump to remain in Syria for the long term. Asked how he convinced Trump, Macron said he told him that, according to US law, one bombing cancels out six sexual harassment lawsuits. Ooh, that Trump logic. That's that Trump logic right there. So he needs at least 30 more battles, right? 30 more battles. At least. And then it'll look like he was never Clean slate. a sexual predator. Trump lawyer Michael Cohen convinced US Weekly to kill a story about an alleged affair between Donald Trump Jr. and a celebrity apprentice contestant. In addition to killing the story, Cohen was able to persuade, to persuade the magazine into running a spread featuring Donald Jr. in some tasteful dinnerware. Finally, giving the people what they want. That's what they been wanted. That's that. what they've been wanting. Well, now it's time to send it over to our Tucson weather specialist, Kim Sunny Burnham, for the five day Tucson for forecast. Sunny, all yours. Oh, wait, she's over here. Wait, no, over there. Hi, Kim. Sunshine, sunny, sunny Burnham with your five day forecast brought to you by Tetro's Tasteful Tourniquets. The only tourniquets that stop bleeding with elegant style. Today is wear your pajamas to work day everybody. Well actually it was last week, which works out great because I forgot to change my clothes. And staying in bed for a whole week will do that to you. So let's start with my favorite day tomorrow because it's the only a day away oh god damn it and i'm telling you now that the sun will come out tomorrow along with cooler temperatures in the mid 70s something tells me that tomorrow i'm going to be wearing my pajamas to work again and probably i'm going to be wearing my pajamas to city court day two the color of the week is Allergy. Today is April 19th, and it is National High Five Day and also National Hanging Out Day. Okay, you're just going to leave me hanging? Okay, fine. That's fine. Well, it's National Hanging Out Day, so of course you're going to leave me hanging. I'll just high five myself. Okay, that's cool. It's all right. So the clouds will roll in on Saturday to coincide with my mania acting up, and it's going to be a great weekend that inevitably I will wake up with two trigger nails and my bank account mysteriously emptied out. Like I will wake up on Sunday and in my apartment be full of knickknacks that I don't remember buying, and I look outside and I see all the clouds hovering, and the temps are in the mid 80s. Don't even go bother going outside because the air is poison. 
And then comes on Monday when the sun returns and we'd be back to the high 90s. Kind of like the odometer before I was surrounded by half the Tucson police force just because I was driving backwards on I-10. I think it's a little overreaction, a little bit. It's gonna get hotter on Tuesday as we hit the mid 90s. A time when suicide is still cool, we drape ourselves in the thick flannel and oh, the good old days. I remember those days. And finally, it's gonna be sunny and hot and, and sticky and, and hi Pedro, hi. Uh, pa I love my pony, Pedro. It died though, it died. Anyways, lots of sun, I'm so happy, so much hope now. Lots of tomorrow and lots of big happy smiles because my love has returned. So that's your five day forecast, Tucson. I'm Kim Sunny Burnham and just so you guys know, I need a place to stay for the next week. Bye. Thanks, Kim. All right, on to more news. National Security Advisor John Bolton is reportedly not finished cleaning house at the Trump administration's Nas national security team. Bolton is currently advocating for war against Syria and is ridding his team of anyone who opposes the military goals of the administration. Late Wednesday, Bolton named a tank-mounted turret machine gun as his deputy and is calling him Shooty McShooterson. It's a uh, very creative name. Well thought out. It sounds like uh, Bodie McBoatface. Mm, Bodie McBoatface. This is a good guy, Bodie McBoatface. Fox News host Sean Hannity was revealed to be a client of Trump lawyer Michael Cohen this week after Cohen revealed his name during a court hearing. Fox News contributor Alan Dershowitz brought Hannity to task on his show this week, telling him that he should have told his viewers of the relationship. Hannity said that the relationship was, quote, minimal, and that he had brief discussions with Cohen about real estate and the best way to get rid of a dead body. What is the best way to get rid of a dead body? Lime. But I don't know what lime juice has to do with it. I just always hear lime. Works oh, great for dead you know bodies. What? what? It works great for dead bodies and coronas. Yes. Lime. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm getting another alert that our new CEO, Ruben Stuttered, is on the line. I'm excited. Are you, are you excited? I'm excited. The show's almost over. Uh, I can get uh, over to the track. Um, my hands are starting to shake, actually. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, me too. Ruben, are, are you there? Hey. Hey, fellas. How, how's things? Hey. Hey, where's the broads? I was told that this newsroom uh, was a meat market. Uh, I'm not seeing much meat. Oh, things are going fine. And no, no me. I've never hated saying something so much. The thing I've hated saying the most is I do. Said it 17 times and counting. Uh, excuse me, but I, I thought you were the Ruben Studdard from American Idol. You don't sound anything like him. Uh, I don't do that queer stuff. Uh, look. My family name goes way back to my great-great-great-grandfather, Dirk Stuttered, who was a famous stutterer. The trait did not pass down to me, but I'm stuck with the name. You know what I'm saying? But the one trait that did pass down to me was, you know what I'm saying? Thanks, Grandpa. Uh, look, we and the viewers at home, we didn't need to know any of that. Yeah, I know it's hard to take. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to take it all in. But I just want to give you an idea of my management style. I knew Brandon ran the place. He ran this place kind of willy-nilly, but no more. OK, speaking of that, how does Brandon know you, actually? I was the family fixer. I'm listening. OK, that's exciting. Like, you took care of shady stuff for the family. You must have some good stories. Oh, yeah, I got some really good stories. Uh, mostly it's stories of Brendan just screwing up. 
like uh, when he accidentally poisoned that waitress or that one time when he sold his soul to Bruce Springsteen or the one time another time he tried to drum four Camaros with a Prius that was a mess but I cleaned up that mess and I'm gonna clean up this mess so first off we're changing stuff no more TV at night what? what? yeah you're gonna start getting up and doing your chores in the morning. No more sleeping in. Even on Sundays. Especially Sundays because you're gonna start going to church. You're gonna need to go to church because you're coming to the strip club with me tonight and every night hereafter. Uh, I actually can't, I'm married. Sorry. I'm married, I'm married, ooh, Mr. Married. Yes, honey, the meatloaf's great. Oh, I'm not gonna die alone. No, what if I told you that you're fired if you don't come? Well, then I'd say what time works for you, Reuben. Hey, I'm in either way. Good, I'll see you at some seven o'clock and I want you to put on something nice. I don't know what's up with that guy. What do you mean? <sighs> I feel like I was on a bad Tinder date. He's just like aggressive and sexual and uh, I don't know, like, you know, me too and all that. I have no idea what you mean. I've been coasting on Xanax for the past few days. So it's all gravy here. You're always coasting on But did you know Xanax. what I always say? When things get hairy, Bet on blue. What does that what does that mean? Whatever you want it to mean. Blue, it's red or all right, well, I guess we'll, we'll figure all this out next week. This has been the Scorcher Report. Uh, remember I've been Rich Gary. Hi Rich Gary. Remember to like, share, and subscribe on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. If you've got a hot news tip for us, good, good for, you. for you. Stay creative, Tucson. You know, I've been hearing more and more about a thing called fake news. Fake, fake news. I've seen people destroyed, and I think it's very unfair.